Uh, I am Kostas Macellos, professor in computing systems design, and since 2018, the president of the Greek regulator and competition authority for telecoms and post markets. I'm also vice chair of the body of European regulators for electronic communications, that is BEREC, for 2024, and I have been the chair of BEREC in 2023. So, to, to enable, um, the deployment of telecom networks is capital intensive. And the last years, there has been a lot of discussion on how to address investment challenges to achieve our connectivity objectives. Uh, I think we would all agree that those expected to invest also rightly expect to have reasonable returns for their investments. On the other hand, we need to keep prices competitive, especially in economic environments of high inflation, to fuel and support uptake. So this is a tough exercise to solve and historically has been uh, addressed by creating economies of scale. I think we need policy uh, policies and regulations in order first to create investment-friendly environment and encourage investments. Second, to reduce infrastructure deployment costs for example, by promoting coordination of civil engineering works or by optimizing complex administrative procedures. And last but not least, we need to address the demand side in order to make networks financially viable in the long term and accessible to the consumers. That means competitively priced. Uh, and at the end of the day, we need to remember that the telecom networks are not an objective by itself, but a platform for the digital transformation of public and private sector, but also of our everyday life. Public funds are also required to address investment challenges in less commercially interesting areas like rural areas. When considering digital infrastructure of the future, such as telecom networks of the future, we need also to have a vision. Future networks will not be about speed, in my opinion. The selling point of higher speed is already exhausted. Higher speeds seem to work good enough, for example, in mobile networks uh, during the transition from 3G to 4G, and for as long as radio access networks were unable to deliver the experience fixed access networks did. For 5, 5G, for example, speed became a much less convincing future network strategy, and most probably it will be a totally non-convincing convincing strategy for 6G. Future networks will also not be about the infrastructure per se. Infrastructure will become totally transparent and uh, less relevant to the end user uh, in a soon to become now time frame. Uh, future networks will be about the new services these networks will make possible. And as we progress towards offering new, complex, socioeconomically transforming services through these networks, as we integrate these services in our day-to-day -day activities, the importance of cybersecurity will truly shine uh, to a full potential. For example, driving automation through the various levels of driver's assistance towards full driving automation is a disrupting service to come in need of secure future electronic communications. E-health and telemedicine, again, disrupting, social transforming new service, waiting to happen in need of a reliable and resilient future network, in need of a predictable network, delivering, for example, more than one active data path between the doctor and the patient at any given time. So these kind of services don't need just a faster version of our current type of network. They need a new type of secure, resilient network. They need a new software-defined type of network. They need network slicing kind of services in 5G language. They need a different type of quality of service. They need us to go beyond best effort networks or just encrypted ones. And these software-defined new services carrying future networks will need to get hardware-level supply chain traceability to avoid having our ultra-flexible ICT infrastructure from getting poisoned in the very own silicon roots, compromising all concepts of cybersecurity we know. And I believe that introducing unique features in otherwise standard silicon for secure chip identification or encryption key storage is a fair compromise and something that can be done and probably should be done soon. Now, coming to what we should avoid, our uh, future ambitious connectivity objectives 
should be technology neutral. We should not get stuck to specific technologies, but we should understand that achieving our ambitious gigabit connectivity objectives in the most cost-efficient way requires a hybrid technology solution. For example, we all know that fiber networks come with several advantages, but their deployment is costly and can take place without subsidies only in urban, commercially interesting areas. To reduce fixed networks deployment costs, technologies such as fixed wireless access or, or even connectivity through low Earth orbit satellites that offer reduced latency should be added in the access mix too. As regards the deployment of fiber to the home networks, we should not neglect competition from legacy networks such as copper networks. We need simple and transparent procedures to avoid having copper networks competing with fiber to the home investments and enable a smooth transition. Uh, uh, we should also avoid thinking about homes past and we should think about homes connected. This means focus on the take up of the fiber to the home services. Converting millions of old buildings uh, without built-in fiber cable infrastructure from homes past to homes connected is a great challenge. This is because of civil engineering costs, of lack of adequate uh, personnel to install, deploy fiber to the home, and also due to the subscriber reluctance due to technician intervention in uh, subscriber space. We need to start thinking in hybrid de deployment terms where fiber gets to the most cost-efficient point. And then existing cable infrastructure like old telephony cables is used as long as fiber-like gigabit performance can be achieved. The most cost-efficient point can be even a point outside the household or outside the building, for example, a street pole. And this concept is, is in line with technology independence, independence. As regards 5G deployments, we should avoid relying exclusively to the traditional macro cell wireless network architecture. 5G is a paradigm shift on how we plan and how we deploy radio, both in terms of embracing millimeter wave band use, but also in terms of moving away from macro cell base stations. Shifting to millimeter wave enable micro cells and pico cells that will be deployed densely within residential areas will enable operating very low power runs, enabling the development of green cell based stations, which uh, could even operate on renewable energy collected at the point of use. Also, we should not forget that 5G needs to be more than just speeding up downloads or quadrupling the resolution of mobile videos we stream, it needs to have a socioeconomic impact in order to be financially sustainable. Additionally, and equally importantly, to the 5G infrastructure, we need to look deeper into real 5G applications. We need 5G in transportation, logistics, tourism, industrial applications. We need revenues from 5G in our economies. We need 5G to enable the manufacturing and offering of more competitive products and services. We need the economically contributing part of the technology in our economies and not only the consumption-related one. Most important, we should not forget adding the word sustainable next to the word future as regards telecom networks. And by sustainable, I mean environmentally sustainable, delivering lower energy consumption, consumption financially sustainable as regards day-to-day uh, -day operations and maintenance, but also socioeconomically sustainable to the benefit of the societies and the economies in equal terms to businesses, sustainable by making our cities smarter and safer, together with enabling small businesses to innovate and large businesses becoming more efficient. Telecommunications need to stop being treated as a consumption-only game, but a potentially value and revenue-generating opportunity for the majority of its users. That will make it sustainable, and that will make our digital infrastructure, like networks, uh, of the future worthy of the adjective future. Thank you.